Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm pretty good, Brian. We got a we've got an international show this week. That doesn't happen that often, but it's a big weekend. Yeah, we're going abroad, Matt. And and hey, look, oh, there's our cover boy. It's Taba. Taba is running overseas. $20 million, Matt. I, I, I can't blame uh, some of the connections for sending the American horses over. But before we start talking about the Saudi Cup and a little bit about the American contingent over there, Matt, we got a big million-dollar Kentucky Derby prep here in the United States. And that's what we're going to focus on this week. Without further ado, let's go to the Rebel. And by the way, I'll be at the Rebel. I'll be down there at Oklahoma Park. Watching the Rebel, Matt, so that'll be fun. Yeah, sounds terrific. Wish I could go. Here we go. Here's the Rebel field, a field of 11, Matt. You want to start from the rail out? Sure, let's do that. Okay, number one is Verifying. Verifying, Matt, is one of two from Trainer Brad Cox. Of course, everybody knows Trainer Brad Cox by now. He is becoming one of the top trainers in the country, and he has a lot of good three-year-olds Two of them run here, Matt, verifying a son of Justify, the triple crown winner, Justify. Verifying looked very good last time in getting a win over the track at Oaklawn Park. Yeah, and, and he's, you know, had a promising career from the get-go when he won uh, his maiden special weight at Saratoga and then ran second in the Champagne, tried the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Um, and now he's back with that big allowance win. And, hey, Brad, uh, Brad Cox is just doing an amazing job spreading his horses out, picking the right places for them, winning races. Uh, uh, I don't know who would keep track of it, but I don't know if uh, one particular trainer has won as many of the points races already at this point as brad cox has yeah last week uh fairgrounds uh, it was the other the other brad cox i said the other twice matt because it was the third choice of three angel of empire winning the risen star down there in new orleans uh at, at pretty good 13 to 1 odds so uh he had three in the risen star he comes back with two Neither one will be 13 to 1 in here, Matt. Certainly not verifying. He had a little bit of excuse when he ran sixth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Sloppy track, went second in the Champagne and only his career start. And that allowance win at Oakland Park last time, which was uh, about six weeks ago, looks very good on paper. So verifying from the rail uh, with uh, Florent Giroux up looks like one of the, uh, the principals, one of the favorites in here. Number two is powerful, Matt, and powerful starts a string of Steve Asmussen horses. Asmussen's got three in here, and I guess powerful would be probably the other other Asmussen as the third choice of the three. Yeah, I think that's probably true, Brian, but uh, an important horse to look at in this field, particularly when you start thinking about the pace, uh, powerful um uh, when last seen was a speedy winner of an overnight stake at Churchill Downs. Um, and, uh, you know, he ran in the Breeders' Futurity, ran 11th in that last year. Um, and another one that also broke their maiden at Saratoga. Um, this race is projected. You got the, we've got the, the, the time form pace projector up there for a fast pace. You see the number two powerful right there as one of the ones that's going to be out there uh, pushing the numbers. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. I think uh, very, uh, powerful will be out there uh, really out, uh, on the lead, and it looks like a fast pace. You see time form U.S. projecting a fast pace with an, a lot of horses involved. Powerful one of them, and I think – Coming out of a, a couple sprints wins, uh, the stakes win at Churchill Downs, the maiden win at Saratoga out of his four races, he sure looks to show some speed in here. Add in that he's fresh because he hasn't run since late November at Churchill Downs, and you certainly would think powerful will be one of the pacemakers in this race. And I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing, Matt, 
The other end of the spectrum is the number three, Red Route One. And Red Route One, again, one of the three Asmussen horses, he's coming off of second on a wet track in the Southwest, and that came behind Arabian Night. Yeah, he's picked up a bunch of derby points already with that second in the Southwest. And then uh, as a two-year-old, ran ran a good fourth in the Kentucky Jockey Club and a good third in the Breeders' Futurity. Uh, it's a, uh, another son of gun runner that Asmussen gets to train. Um, so, yeah, this Red Route won a lot of experience in the bigger uh, official Kentucky Derby points races that have been run already. Hasn't gotten a win, but always seems to run well. Yeah, he always seems to run well. I think you hit it on the head there because he's always running late and he's done it at now in three very good races that you mentioned. Uh, a fast track. Last time was a sloppy track. He wasn't close to Arabian Night, but Arabian Night is certainly one of the Kentucky Derby favorites at this point, Matt. And Red Route 1 rallied nicely to, uh, to get second. This one... That had a pretty fast pace, but it wasn't a real contested pace. This one looks like a contested pace in a pretty big field. Red Route 1, it, it could be set up uh, for Red Route 1's rate, late run in the uh, Rebel on Saturday. And the third of the three Aspies and Horses, Matt, is Gun Pilot. Gun Pilot, of course, is another son of gun runner for Asmussen. And Gun Pilot is one of those horses who could be getting good. He's only had three lifetime starts. Uh, he's coming off a win over the track just a few weeks ago at Oakland Park at a mile. Uh, before that, though, he was handled pretty easily in an allowance race by Verifying. So that was his only loss. Only one horse has finished ahead of Gun Pilot. That's Verifying. Yeah, and uh, uh, broke his maiden at Churchill Downs, and and certainly that uh, allowance race at Oakland Park uh, uh, was a good prep for this. But yeah. This is a big uh, step up against a pretty good field. It is. It is. And, and we'll have to see how good Gun Pilot is. But Gun Pilot certainly a horse with the potential to be getting better and better as this three-year-old season goes on. And I think we're going to be seeing Asmussen trained gun runners for years to come now, Matt. Here are two in a row in Red Route 1 and, of course, Gun Pilot. Uh, number five uh, in the Rebel, Matt, is uh, a horse who uh, – could go favorite, or or he could be the third choice. He's the second of two from trainer Brad Cox. Giant mischief. And, and I think of the three horses that are going to vie for favoritism here, I'm including his stable mate Verifying and the uh, the uh, shipper from California, formerly trained by Baffert, we're going to talk about in a minute, reincarnate. Giant mischief is the one who can pass horses. That's uh, probably a good thing here in the Rebel. Yeah, uh, it sure seems like uh, Giant Mischief is one of the horses that's going to benefit from the predicted fast pace. He's not going to be as far behind as Red Root, Red Root 1 is going to be. I, As you can see in the pace projector again, the number 5 appears to be kind of sitting in the second pack of horses, uh, 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 you know, a the, uh, a late kind of stalking trip a little bit more for Giant Mischief. Um, he's had a little bit of a break since running in the springboard mile in December where uh, he got off to a really bad start in that race and had to rally from a little farther back than usual and finished a good second, was probably the best horse in the field that day. Yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you. The springboard mile was uh, not a great trip for Giant Mischief, and he, he made a lot. Uh, he, he, he made lemonade out of lemons that day to get second in the springboard mile. Before that, a, a nice winter uh, sprinting, five and a half furlongs at uh, Horseshoe, Indianapolis, and then he went to Keeneland and ran an impressive allowance win over uh, another highly regarded Baffert horse. So Giant Mischief, a horse who can come off the pace, Matt, time for him, USA. Look for him in the middle of the pack. And I, I think that's a good thing on Saturday here in this million dollar mile on the 16th Rebel. Number six, another one of those three favorites, uh, potential favorites I was talking about, reincarnate, trained by Tim Yak Team. Matt, Tim Yak Team has the uh, uh, potential favorite in here in reincarnate. Of course, he was recently shifted from trainer Bob Baffert's barn to the Yak Team barn. 
Yeah, the first one of those transfers that is going to show up in a derby prep race looking to pick up derby points. And, and there's we got 50 of them for the winner of, uh, of this Rebel Stakes. Um, he won the sham last time, which was, you know, uh, should have been 10 points to him, but he was not eligible for that. An interesting uh, horse from the Baffert barn we, that we don't see very often, that uh, this horse started out running on the turf. Um, with uh, with Baffert, you know, Derby horses and Baffert horses, period. We don't see him on the turf very often. He began with three second place finishes um, and then got that win in the sham. So, again, a horse that prefers to run out front. The pace projector doesn't have him in the, you know, the, the top three in there. But I wouldn't be surprised if Reincarnate is out there uh, with the leaders. No, absolutely. Uh, Johnny V comes in to ride reincarnate, who who is a game winner of both his maiden two starts back at Del Mar. And then, of course, as Matt mentioned, the sham last time. He hasn't run a bad race because his first three career races, uh, turf to start with, he ran a, a competitive second in the first three before winning his last two. Yeah, I would expect him. And we see this time form U.S. pace projector one more time to be definitely part of of those horses out there, but it does look crowded. Another one that's uh, up there is number seven, confidence game for trainer uh, uh, Keith DeSormo. We see a lot of DeSormo horses over the years who kind of uh, pull off a little upset, whether they win or, or, or run a very good race. He's had some success in derby preps and even in the Kentucky Derby, at least a second in the Kentucky Derby, and then a Preakness win with Exaggerator. Confidence Game is a horse who uh, he, he's won a couple nice races in his career, a maiden at Churchill and an allowance at Churchill. Last time he ran into uh, Instant Coffee, one of the potential Kentucky Derby favorites as we're speaking right now in the LeCompte, and he couldn't quite stick with him. But, uh, yeah, another horse, Matt, who kind of wants to be on or near the early lead. Yeah, and, and and another horse that's flashed talent. Uh, you know, last year's a two-year-old. He tried the Derby Trail in the Iroquois and finished fifth, but has come back from that, as you mentioned, to win uh, an allowance race and and third place finish uh, in the Villa Comp. But again, you know, a lot of speed, and here's another speed horse, and it's a big field. Um, not going to be easy for confidence game. Agree. Number eight, Talladega wired a maiden race at Oaklawn Park last time, Matt. He is a uh, a son of into mischief for trainer Rodolph Brissett, and uh, it took him four starts to win that maiden. He he didn't look like a world beater necessarily. He got a wet, fast track, and we might have rain in the forecast for the Rebel again. Uh, still, I don't know if that uh, wire job as the favorite in a maiden race is making me think that he's a big contender here in the rebel. Yeah, I don't think so, Brian, for a horse that may also prefer to be forwardly placed. Yeah. Number nine event detail. He's a horse who could have the potential to be pretty good. Another one of these Paula Lobo horses that we've been seeing that's that have run up at Turfway Park, uh, $600,000 uh, purchase back in November uh, of his yearling uh, year. Um, he's getting better with every start, but uh, the last two are uh, at Turfway Park. Maiden race is there at a mile. He's rallied, uh, but of course those aren't dirt. Those are an all-weather surface, and they're Turfway Park maidens. Yeah, I, I, and I agree. He, this could be a horse who turns out to be uh, pretty good as uh, the year goes on, but it sure is hard to uh, evaluate those races on the artificial surface going into a big race like this in uh, uh, Rebel, um, for sure, he's going to be one of the long shots. He'll be one of the long shots, but maybe of the crazy long shots, he's the one who could step up a little bit with his penchant for coming from off the pace and and maybe some potential to be a nice horse. Number 10, Bourbon Bash. There's D. Wayne Lucas, Matt. We can't go to too many big races over the last, oh, I don't know, uh, what are we talking, 40-plus years now without D. Wayne Lucas uh, involved a little bit. Bourbon Bash, 
uh, a winner of only one of eight, Matt. Uh, I guess the last two at Oakland Park are decent, but I'm looking at his past performances here. And in the last three races, he's been beaten by three different horses in this race. And none of those three horses are horses that I'm really liking as one of the top contenders. Yeah, you know, he uh, uh, broke his maiden, then he tried a couple of grade one races and just, I mean, he just couldn't compete at all in those races, finishing uh, way, way behind. Does have a couple of, you know, uh, he is stakes placed a couple times in uh, lesser stakes at tracks in Kentucky, but this is a very tough spot for a horse like you mentioned that has finished behind a number of horses that we've already mentioned in this field and has already shown that, you know, he has had a lot of trouble in graded stakes. Yeah, I, I think he's up against it. And probably the number 11 is is a little bit up against it. You could say, well, Frosted Departure did run third in, last time in the uh, Southwest Stakes, and he was only a couple lengths behind Red Route 1, who I like a little bit in this spot. But he was another one that uh, likes to be close early, and, and he wasn't really running really strongly down the stretch in that Southwest. This only looks tougher, the pace scenario, the depth of the field. It's hard to jump on Frosted Departure. Yeah, it's got a lot of a lot of experience though for trainer uh, Kenny McPeak. Um, he did win a uh, sprint stake at Oaklawn Park, so you know I, I think there's some talent there. But like you described, with the pace and the quality of the fi- of the field, eleven post position, he's in a tough spot. In a tough spot, Matt. Let's take a quick look at the Horse Racing Nation track trends that we've been doing lately. Uh, Last 83 races are dirt route races. The last 83 dirt route races at Oaklawn Park. Uh, The average number of runners, you see Oaklawn Park has a nice uh, field size. There are almost nine per race. And it, it looks like it's an advantage to be, a little bit of an advantage to be on the inside. One through three winning Uh, more often than the other two spots, but 23% from horses outside of the seven hole. That's not a bad number as well. And as far as speed or coming a little bit off it, very fair track. Uh, You see the stalkers actually have more wins than the early leaders. Yeah. And, and I guess it should be a little bit of a concern looking at those numbers for the deep closers, Brian, Uh, they're not winning very often. Yeah, but I think that's the trend in most races, Matt, is, is the deep closers have the, the, the least percentage, the least chance to win that race. In a race like the Rebel with all the speed, I, I think that number would go up. I think of Oakland Park anyway as a fair racing surface, and I think we see that in the Horse Racing Nation track trends. Matt, are you ready to reveal your top pick for this million-dollar Rebel Stakes? Could be a key prep on the Kentucky Derby Trail. I am, Brian. You know, I, I, I just think that uh, uh, Brad Cox, the Brad Cox uh, Derby prep bandwagon is hard to buck in this race, considering the pace scenario in here and considering that that fast pace is likely to benefit both verifying and giant mischief. So, I think one of those two Brad Cox horses is going to win the race. I am going with Giant Mischief because I've been waiting for Giant Mischief to come back since that troubled trip in the Springboard Mile. I agree with you. Giant Mischief has a big shot in here. In fact, of the three favorites, I like them best. I will disagree with you a little bit about the pace. I'm not sure a fast, strong pace is going to benefit verifying. I think it will benefit Giant Mischief, though, so I agree with you there. If I had to pick a horse to beat, it would be Giant Mischief. Matt, I don't know if you remember last week when we were talking about the mineshaft, I said I was going between Pioneer Medina or Tawny Port going back and forth, and you picked Pioneer Medina. I picked Tawny Port, and that hemming and hawing cost me. It, It might be again because I really did give strong consideration to picking Giant Mischief as my top pick here, but I'm going to go for a little bit more odds, Matt. I'm talking too much. I just think Red Route 1 is the horse that's going to benefit from a very fast, contentious pace in the Rebel. No better than the fourth choice, probably will be the fourth choice, but uh, those should be pretty good odds. So I'm going to go with the Asmussen runner, 
not the Cox runner. Red Route 1 is my top pick. Matt, uh, it's time we shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit what's going on in Saudi Arabia. Uh, you'll, you'll pronounce the racetrack for me because I don't want everyone to laugh at my pronunciation of that racetrack again. Uh, but $20 million, it's obscene amount of money. Uh, they have a bunch of uh, uh, undercard races that are very good, too. So uh, we see a bunch of Americans, a number of Americans, some good Americans having a meltdown. One of the fastest three-year-olds in the country is running in the Saudi Derby. Casa Creed, one of our favorite uh, short to middle distance turf horses over here, is running in the turf sprint. Uh, two of our very best sprinters, in fact, a champion, elite power, will run, as well as Gunite, a horse who I predicted could very well be a sprint champion. They're running in, in a sprint, dirt sprint over there. And then we got the big one, the $20 million Saudi Cup, and we see Bob Baffert, that trainer, there he is again. He's represented by two, the only two Americans in the actual $20 million, about nine furlong, one turn Saudi Cup, Matt. Taba, number two, Country Grammar, number 10, I'm a homer. We're never going to go over to Saudi Arabia to watch this race. You and I, you know, I, I, I know there are a lot of people in the business that will, but I can tell you right now, neither of one of us are going to go over there, Matt. I'm a homer. I'm an American. I, th I think they're the two to beat. Am I wrong? I, uh, hey, Brian, they, they, I certainly have a very strong shot in here, but this is, this is a pretty good field, Brian. There there's six horses from Japan and, these Japanese horses have been running very well. We, we've seen it in the Breeders' Cup. Um, so uh, they certainly have to be considered. Last year's winner uh, in uh, Emblem Road is coming back, and, and he won an allowance race in preparation for this. There's a bunch of horses that are local horses that just win and win and win at King Abdulaziz Racecourse. You got it, Matt. You got the you got the pronunciation. King Abdul Aziz. Oh, I'm 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 probably way off, but well There's done. A lot for, of Z's. That's okay. Zip Z. Well, well done for getting the name of the racetrack for me. I struggle enough just to produce the show. Let's look at that field one more time. And you're right. And and, and a little bit of what I was saying about being a homer's tongue in cheek, because we've seen whether it be the Dubai World Cup or, or the relatively new Saudi Cup or now even some of the American races, uh, these Japanese horses or the local Saudi horses like Emblem Road last year pulling off a big upset that they can run with our really good American dirt horses. So there's reason to believe that uh, the Americans can get beat again. Although I do like Taba, I think Taba was a progressive horse to say the least after winning the Santa Anita Derby in only his second career start. Three grade one wins last year, this, another Sonic gun rider. Taba is a horse who, who could turn out to be the best dirt horse in the world this year, Matt, and it could start with a big win in the Saudi Cup. He would be my horse to beat, but you gotta respect those Japanese horses. Uh, speed on the rail, uh, crown pride we know as the uh, UAE Derby winner last year. Cafe Faro has won a bunch of big races over in Japan. Uh, Geoglyph and, and, and Vindegard are, are classy horses from over there. And June Light Bolt is, is kind of the hot commodity on since he switched to dirt over in Japan. So the Japanese is the country, they're, they're the ones going over really uh, uh, full bore in this uh, $20 million race. And you have to respect them. Country Grammar, what do you think of him, Matt? Hey, Brian, uh, you know, both Country Grammar and Taiba uh, were last in, seen winning races uh, uh, in preparation for this. Um, uh, 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 Taiba won the Malibu and, and Country Grammar won the San Antonio. Country Grammar was second in this race uh, last year behind Emblem Road and then came back a month later to win the Dubai World Cup. Um, he travels well, obviously runs well on the racetrack. Um, got as good a shot as anybody. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. I, I prefer Taba as an American. 
Uh, horse, uh, if they were running over here, I'd have no trouble saying Taba over Country Grammar. But uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Country Grammar. Last year, he went into the Saudi Cup fresh, really fresh. Yeah. This year, he's uh, he's got a much more recent race than last year. We'll see if that changes anything. But he he ran really well at both uh, uh, Maidan and, and, of course, in the Saudi Cup last year. So uh, uh, Country Grammar, uh, also a, a big shot as well as Taba in the Saudi Cup. Rooting for the Americans. Casa Creed, again, was another one I mentioned. Uh, I like Gunite quite a bit. Uh, Gunite and, 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 and Elite Power, uh, the Breeders' Cup winner in that sprint. And uh, having a meltdown, another Bafford horse with a lot of speed, probably will be the one to beat in that Saudi Derby. All right, folks, that's our show today. We hope you uh, enjoyed our rundown, analysis, top picks for the Rebel Stakes. You'll You'll like it more if we picked a winner for you in the Rebel. And then our little look over at the Saudi Cup and other doings uh, on Saturday. That'll be Saturday morning, by the way, with the uh, time difference over in America. Matt, before we go, can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Yeah, I think post time for the uh, the Saudi Cup in America is 11.05 Eastern time, I think. So, yeah, uh, uh, a morning start and hey horse center fans it's your opportunity if you're going to be at the big rebel day keep your eye out for zipsy and be sure to say hello to him and, and oh. as always thanks for watching the show yeah post time and and watch out for zipsy uh good good things to think about i'll be the man at the rebel with one red shoe if anybody knows that movie reference i i uh i apologize because it wasn't the greatest movie in the world anyway Thanks to all you for watching each and every week here on Horse Center. We sure do appreciate it. Thanks to Candace Curtis, our friend in the Louisville home office for the race graphics. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. And yeah, Timeform US for their great pace projections that we use every week. Folks, Matt and I will be back next week with another big edition of Horse Center. We can't wait to see you then. Until then, have a great week and good luck at the races.